2.2. And as it says there, our current uh, internal documentation preparation pipelines have a very hard dependency on, on Platypus. It's, it's key to how we prepare our, our uh, XML help, our MAML help. It's key to how we prepare our HTML help that's on learnmicrosoft.com. It's one of those things that's just absolutely positively core to how we provide our uh, help documentation to our customers and uh, internal and external. But what we really need to do, we looked at this, at the problems we were having and, and the things we wanted to do and what we need to do is preserve that capability and make sure that what we're doing now is we continue to be able to, uh, to to do those things, even though they may not be expressed in the same way. So it may not be, uh, it's definitely not uh, uh, command, command uh, compatible, this, this, uh, this version that we're working on, but it does preserve the, the, the capabilities of how, what you can do and what assets and uh, artifacts you are left with after you've used it. So it still can produce YAML, it can still produce uh, mammal that can still produce it does all of those things uh, one of the things that we wanted to do with version one is to make sure that this new approach that we're that, that we've taken is um, is seen as to being a little bit of a different beast so we've uh, it's been renamed as you as you probably know to microsoft.powershell.platypus platypus however you like um, uh, and we did that to kind of reduce confusion if you're thinking that this is what it, this is just another iteration on the current code base it is not it is a kind of a, a new look at uh, at at how to go about uh, con constructing uh, documentation and help for PowerShell and we wanted to address uh, the outstanding issues that we have in those in the current code base uh, and we want to be sure that the requests for behavior are addressed. And so that's one of the things that we wanted to do. Uh, we also want to, we also have a desire internally, uh, and I think everyone probably does, to improve the fidelity of our online help. If you think about our online help, especially with regard to parameters and their intricacies and, and uh, subtleties, the current online help does not necessarily do a good job of providing a way to describe the complexity of a parameter because a parameter can be position one in one parameter set and position two in another parameter set and named in a third parameter set. So we needed a way to kind of express that. And the current, if you look at the schema for how we define what help does, there is not a way to express that in the current schema. So we had to make schema changes in order to support that. And if you think about the mammal, the mammal is a very lossy view of, of if you think about how, uh, how, uh, how the help uh, in in mammal doesn't that doesn't you, you miss a, you can lose a lot of information and we wanted we that we can't really do much about that but we didn't want to make that be the box that we put ourselves in so we needed a way to express this more complicated uh, schema in in mammal uh, and make sure that our current online help approach or our current on box help, the help XML files uh, kind of are preserved in in their lossy state. We don't, can't do very much about them. There's another issue with regard to the way the XML is created, where if you have, uh, for example, a, a block of code or a table or something that uh, 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 would you'd like to have some extra line spaces, if you will. It's the current tool set doesn't do a, a doesn't necessarily support that very well, and we wanted to try to Im improve uh, improve that as well. We also wanted to change the sort of a monolithic approach. One of the things I noticed as I started to work on the code base is that there are a lot of parameters that keep getting shoved into a into an existing command that could be better expressed as a compositional approach that says do this and then do that because you're always going to be dealing with these help objects and so then you've got these things so 
don't necessarily add on to the existing commandlets to to create those combined or or composite behaviors allow uh, scripting to do that for you. And in fact, one of the things that I'll talk about, well, I'll talk about it now. One of the things we have a view on providing a part of this package that we haven't done yet is to create those workflows as functions or scripts. And that way you can see, hey, if you've got this sort of pipeline, here's the way to express that as a compositional approach rather than throwing 75 parameters at a particular command. <clears throat> and and that should kind of that kind of brings it back into um, gives you a more knobs that you have to at your disposable disposal, and you're not looking for an extra feature in this command or in that command. What you're really doing is trying to find a way to compose a set of commands that will give you uh, give you what you need. Uh, the code base that we have has a high burden. It's all written in PowerShell script. Sorry, it's not all written in PowerShell script. It's written in C Sharp and PowerShell. And some of the object model is in C Sharp and some of the objects are held in script. And that becomes kind of a, a, a that becomes kind of a, a, a high burden for code maintenance and it makes it harder to fix issues when they arise because of the complexity of that. So uh, it's someplace, sometimes it's kind of quite difficult to approach the problem and solve and solve the code problem uh, without doing a lot of uh, rewriting. So we wanted to kind of improve that. It's one of the reasons, one of the reasons why we moved to a C-sharp based solution for all the commands. There's a couple of other reasons we, I, I wanted to take, we wanted to go that way. I also have to say that initially, uh, internally, uh, Aditya was uh, leading the charge with this, this project with Platypus. Uh, and then uh, I, I made, was, I got available and I was able to kind of pitch in. And so I've done a bunch of stuff in the, in the, last six months or so. If uh, we also wanted to in, in improve the performance of our operations so you could do things a little bit quicker and didn't have to wait. And I'll show you a couple of demos where where that's really uh, with where that's really clear. So uh, one of the one of the things that we want to be sure, like we continue to do, is authoring is in Markdown, the source of truth, if you will. You write a document in, in Markdown, and that is what you convert to uh, to the help that we use internally, which is expressed as YAML before in our own pipeline, and we want to be able to also express that help as an XML. So what we wound up doing is creating a Markdown parser that builds an object that is kind of universal to whatever help we want to express. So there's one object that expresses the way the help looks, that contains all of the new feature sets that we want to do. It allows for arbitrary front matter, so it allows for inclusion for, uh, to include metadata. And one of the things that I want to be sure is, is that that metadata allows you to uh, uh, always be co-located with the source of the help. So it means that there's one document that you need to hold on to. You, there's one document or one asset, one file that contains all the information that you need about the, the what you want to do with that markdown or how that markdown should behave or how that, you know, the properties of that markdown, the locales and things like that. If, if you separate those two things, they can kind of get lost and you can kind of lose track of it or it doesn't get updated and it's kind of a it's continued uh, it's kind of a continued maintenance issue that if you separate this data into two different assets two different files then it makes it more difficult so the this arbitrary front matter it's just a dictionary it's just a dictionary expressed in yaml and so it can pre pretty pretty much whatever it is that you need it to be uh, and I talked about the I talked about the update uh, the help schema update. So the the schema got quite a bit more complicated as we continued to look at the things that we wanted to express. And that's one of the reasons why uh, uh, the 
param- I keep going back to the parameters because it's a big place where the fidelity of information with regard to how it's represented and how it's presented to the user, either in XML or in HTML or whatever, it doesn't contain enough information. So we need to make big changes there. We also want it to become a bit more consistent with the way that that uh, 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 that some of the other attributes of a command that have. For example, in, in, in MAML, I think the only way that you can express that uh, commandlet has an alias is to put it in the notes. And that's really not a very, that's really not a, a, a great design for making this arbitrary text somewhere in some notes capture this information. So we've added things to the schema like an alias block now in the in the markdown. So if you put it in the markdown there, we parse it into a, it gets in, parsed into the object and away it goes and it gets hold on. So we wanted to kind of improve our our schema to make sure that we have that. So we created this command help object. And this command help object can be handed off to any number of writers, if you will. So we'll talk about, I'm about to show a, a, a diagram of how this all works. So if you want, once you get this command object, you can write it back to Markdown if that's what you want. And in fact, uh, one of the things I'll show you is, is in the demo is this, because of the schema change, we don't want to have our users have to author those change those schema changes. We want to do that for the user. So the current parser handles version the current version of schema and the and the new version of schema and it will automatically create for you in fact you don't have a choice it will create a version 2 of the schema internally and then when you write it out it will preserve that new new schema uh, and and so you can't hold on to the version one. It does it for you automatically. You, it it uh, it's and, and like I said, there's not a way to save in the new, in the old version of Markdown. Uh, again, this doesn't affect the way it's preserved in the Mammal because the Mammal is has its own set of requ- requirements. But if you want to create a YAML file from this uh, this object, there's a writer for that. And then if you if in the future we want to write a HTML writer or some other sort of writer, it's certainly the the architecture of the of this part of the engine of the of the help engine, this this uh, platypus engine, it's very easy to extend it. There's a base class that you can inherit from and all you have to do is implement a bunch of implement a bunch of methods and boom you can build your yourself a, a, a HTML writer or if you want to have whatever whatever your uh, uh, whatever your uh, desires are it's 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 extendable in that way uh, we also want to make sure that we are creating this table of contents or a module file uh, which allows for command groupings I'm not it doesn't usually it's it's not usually expressed in the powershell commandlets because we do one module is a set of commandlets but exchange for example has a a massive table of contents file which has all of their their uh commandlets grouped in behavioral sections so they have they have a, a group for dealing with users they have a group for dealing with uh dealing with uh, servers and they have a, a mailboxes and all the rest of that and so they have a lot of groups and in their in their table of contents their module file the landing page they would like to be able to preserve that without having to have an authoring process for it so it is possible for this to be supported in uh in the new version of 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 Plat- uh, platypus. Lastly, uh, this last bullet here, um, because we're dealing with objects and all of these objects are public, you can actually build a uh, command help object out of whole cloth. Just new it up and start editing the object, and then you can express that you can then export that to a markdown or yaml or even even mammal and that's kind of useful if you have a documentation pipeline where you keep uh, your documentation essentially in a database and you could actually pull all the information out of a database populate the object and you never even have to have markdown until you get into your 
pipeline preparation, or if you want to show it as Markdown or you want to have a help page as Markdown so you could use it with things like Glow or uh, other Markdown renderers, you could use, you could just build your objects out of whole cloth. And that's, that because we've moved to this object, uh, object, model of help approach, uh, making those public gives you a, a, a few more options. It's generally not going to be used unless you really have that sort of need, but there's no reason to disallow its use uh, because it is, frankly, quite useful. So this next slide, this is really, this really shows kind of the, the way the everything flows with regard to uh, the command help so if you have Markdown and you have YAML or you have XML, the MAML, or if you, even if you have a command info, we have a set of import command that's will, which will either read your, uh, your file asset or it will take and transform a command info object and build uh, in, in a converter or in the case of Markdown or YAML, a parser, it will generate this help, this command help object. Once you've generated that command help object, you can, we have a set of exporting commandlets which allow you to uh, create uh, the, the new artifacts on, on disk, pardon me. <coughs> uh, allow you to export those things. And so you, we have this command, we have a writer base, we have a base class which essentially ensures that the ordering is uh, the same for both Markdown and YAML. And all, you ha all I wound up doing was implementing writers for each one of those uh, methods, which, uh, which are part of the, the, the Markdown document. And it, you then creates these new Markdown or YAML, or in the case of XML or MAML, it will create those things. So from a, from a, a architectural perspective, everything kind of flows through the command help object. And once you have a command help object, then you can kind of do whatever you want. You can modify it and then export it, or you can just import it and export it. And that's essentially one of the demos I'll show is how do I get from version one of the schema to version two of the schema? And I'll show that. Here are the new sets, of, here are the new commandlets. There's a couple of uh, there's a couple of new things here uh, uh, that you might see. There's a command help, and then you have the these ex and then here are the export and import uh, commands that I was talking about earlier. This is the part of its compositional model. So you can uh, you can create these uh, you can use these as as pipelineable uh, events and and take a command help and move it through a pipeline. And we'll be showing some of that in the demo that's coming up. So we have compare help, command help. That allows you actually to compare two command helps to see if, if, you've, got, if you've got two or you have updates that you want to make one, you can make, uh, uh, make to one. You can actually update it and then inspect the differences. Uh, it's more of a report than it, – it's not of this is this was a tool that I wound up creating that, that had enough – has enough utility that we decided that to include it because it doesn't actually emit objects; it just emits strings, and I'll, we'll go through that in just a, in a little bit. So it's more like a report generator rather than uh, a tool that you'd use. Although uh, it is, it does have, have its utility. And then you see all the export commandlets, the import commandlets. All obviously they, they they're they're symmetrical here. So you've got import and you've got export. And then you have this measure platypus markdown. Measure platypus markdown will take a markdown file and tell you what it thinks it is. And if it can't determine, it will tell you that it's unknown. And if it can determine it, it will tell you that, oh, this is a command help, or this is a module file, or this is an about topic. And that way you can kind of identify uh, the, the artifacts you have on your, on your disk. New command help and new markdown command help are subtly different. New command help actually returns you the command help object. New markdown command help actually writes uh, the command help onto the disk. So new command help returns you the command help object. New markdown command help writes the file to the to the uh, uh, to the disk and returns the file info object of the file that you just created. 
Uh, new Markdown module file allows you to create these table of contents files. And uh, uh, test, I won't be able to show everything because we don't really quite have enough time, but the test markdown command help actually allows you to determine whether or not the, the command help follows the schema that we believe that they should have. And so it looks for the, the H2s in the file and tells you, and the metadata, and tells you whether or not it found anything that it, it or it didn't find something that I thought that it thinks it should be there or uh, that, it, that it doesn't actually, <clears throat> doesn't tell you if you have extra, it just, but it just makes sure that you have some, pardon me, I'm gonna cough. Okay. Um, so test markdown does that update command help allows you to update uh, uh, a command help update markdown command help uh, both of those again they work against either an object or the file update markdown command help allows you to update a file on the disk with a, with new data if you have the command at hand you can say update markdown command help of a file name, it will go and determine what the, f the command that is. It will then transform that command info object into, uh, uh, mark into the command help object, and then it will take changed bits and put them into the uh, updated, uh, into the markdown file. Uh, there, are, there are two script-based uh, commandlets, new cabinet, help cabinet file, and show help preview. Those are script-based commandlets that are delivered. Uh, those I expect will change. They're also a new help uh, cabinet file, by the way, is only for Windows as it uses the makecab.exe, and that is not available on non-Windows platforms. So there's, these, are the new, uh, these are the new commands that will be, that, that would be supplying. These new test tools I talked about already, uh, the, the test markdown command help tells you about the major structural ed elements of the command help markdown. Comare, compare command help gives it this report. Measure uh, Platypus markdown allows you to uh, see what Platypus thinks those files are. And then we've added a whole set of diagnostics to, the, uh, to some of the tools to uh, to provide an insight into how the parsing occurred and whether or not we believe there are errors in that pro in the in the parsing process or whether or not the assets that you've provided us to to import to parse uh, are missing elements uh, and and uh, and that is um, that is super important, and these commands are the ones that we've implemented that. It's certainly reasonable that we could uh, add more diagnostics. There's just a lot of diagnostics to, to add that we don't, that we, uh, that we have left to go. Uh, uh, here are some workflows. For example, if you wanted to create new help from commandlets, this is how you would do it. This is one way, to, sorry, this is not how you would do it. This is one way that you could go about doing it. Get command minus module and pipe that to new help, uh, new markdown command help and add the module page and then you would have the the assets on the on the ground along with the table of contents file. Here is the easiest way to uh, convert to old schema, just import it. When you import it, it's done. And then if you export that markdown command help, that's that file on the on the ground that the, the file that's created by that is now in the version 2 schema. Here's the similar way where you uh, create the mammal command help. It's done very similarly as it has been done in the past. You, you get the command help and then you export that as mammal and away you go. A couple of, we have a, a, a few, uh, a few more things about importing markdown help. You export them. That's how you just convert a bulk. That's do your bulk conversion to YAML. You can categorize all your markdowns. You can uh, view. Here's a cute little thing that I just thought about doing, and and this is a way, a quick way to use Glow to view the examples of all of our new document. So we're going to kind of go through this. Here's the demo. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop sharing this, 
and I'm going to share my screen, and we're going to walk through a couple of those demos. And screen share, screen share, and we're going to do this. Make this go away. You should now see uh, Visual Studio. I see it on the screen. Uh, uh, yeah, so you should see this now too. Somebody give me a, a audible ack. Oh, thank you. That's visual. Perfect. Thank you so much. So here is uh, the creating the new help from commandlets. Let's do, do this. Get the command from the module and create the new markdown help, and it's all done. So that's one of the things that we've that I think we've improved is the experience in uh, the the speed of how how this works. And now we can actually look at this help using Clo, and this is what we create from the from the uh, kind of the you call it the boilerplate or template for help. Uh, where it doesn't have it doesn't have this information because it doesn't exist in the uh, the existing help XML files because they don't exist. This is my my uh, local system which we haven't done that on. So it shows all of the things that you'd see in the in the the, the in the markdown. And then we may get down here to the parameters. This is where it gets a little bit more tricky, and you can start to see that that in this case we're filling in a lot more information about parameters and parameter sets. So when you look at all of these things, you're going to necessarily, you're going to see, uh, uh, you're going to see things like uh, uh, position and, and uh, what parameter set it is in, and you'll be able to determine all that. And all of that will then get reflected into our online help and in our HTML pages. And so that information will be start to become quite a bit more, um, uh, have a higher fidelity. So let's stop that. Here's another little guy. This is how we go and this is the conversion thing that I was telling you about. This is converting. Uh, I'll talk, talk about Glow in a bit. It's a, it's a markdown rendering. Uh, it's a open source. I think it's on GitHub. You can get Glow. Uh, just do GitHub Glow search and you should find it. So what we think here what we measure this and we think, hey, this is a command help. It's in the V1 schema and here's the path. And now when we, we're going to just import that file, we're going to outport that file, we're going to measure. And so this is the file it just created. And then we go and do, uh, check this again. And now we say, oh, this is a V2 schema. And in fact, you can, uh, if, if we were to edit this file, we'll start to see that this information is looking like the usual mark down here, but down here where we get into the, ex not the examples, but the parameters, you'll start to see that, if I get far enough, there we go. You'll start to see all of this new information. Now that was not the way it was expressed in the version one document. It's a much simpler, it's a much simpler uh, expression. Uh, and in fact, we can look at that like that. And so we'll go down to the parameters. And you can see that the parameter, that the parameter metadata is like, well, positions, it might be position zero in one parameter set, but I don't know, because we're not even capturing the parameter set. Uh, MAML doesn't do that. So, and we didn't do it in version one. We've changed all that to kind of get a little bit smarter. Yes, brew install glow is how I installed it. So let's take a look here. Here is our mammal. So now we're going to take we're going to take all of the help from the uh, our docs our our doc repository and uh, uh, for the utilities we're going to import it all. We're going to create the mammal out of it in the directory and then we're going to see whether it's a real XML file and we'll show a help preview. That's what this is going to do. So this is, that's imported all of them. Now we've exported it and now 
uh, we'll just do this, show help preview. And this is what the help looks like, of course. And you can see that it looks like help. So that's that's how you would create manual help. It's fairly similar to what the way you would do uh, normally. And here we can take a look at this. Oh, I didn't actually. That went by so quick. Uh, this guy here, it is an XML file. Obviously, it is because otherwise the help would have blown up. Yeah, it, it knows it's a help item. So let's get rid of you. Let's go create some YAML. YAML may not be important for some of your workflows, but it's absolutely imperative for the internal Microsoft uh, documentation pipeline. Oh, here we go. So we're going to import. We're going to, again, we're going to import all of the utility markdown. We're going to export those files into that directory, and we just want to see size and file name. Oh, ha, ha, ha. Obviously done that before. So there we can do, and now we can actually edit the file. We go and look at, this is the YAML that's been created. You see it's preserving the metadata and preserving all of the description. And, and one of the things I should mention is a lot of this deserial, a lot of this serialization and deserialization paths are are being done by yaml.net rather than handcrafting the yaml which is what was happening happening a bit and it's problematic uh, uh, because of illegal characters in yaml they're automatically quoted all you have to do is hand the yaml deserializer uh, or serializer a an object and it says okay thanks very much and goes on and does it i'm getting close to time here um, one of the things I wound up doing as I was implementing this object model is I implemented equal, uh, equality for all of the objects and its properties. So you can actually then take, did that actually go? Copy. You can actually do something that looks like this. It should be. Uh, and and uh, it you can actually now there's there's code I implemented I equality uh, equality in the, the in these base objects in this command help object and all of its properties so and when we do a comparison of these two things all of the properties are being compared and that's uh, uh, and that actually if you're making small changes and you want to see hey did anything change here you can or didn't change. Uh, you can actually check, check pretty quickly. I am running a bit out of time, but we're getting pretty close. I'm going to skip a little bit. Here we go. Let's do this one. So this is going to actually allow me to look at all of the reference documents for 7.4 that we provide in our documentation and take a look. What is, what is Platypus? What is, Current platypus think about what we're looking at. So it found 147 about topics. It found 303 command help objects of version one schema and 12 module file of version one schema. And if we were to take a look at that, we would uh, be able to see all of those files. And it allows us to kind of quickly categorize or quickly understand what kind of the the broad layout of what we're working against. And it's a pretty quick little thing, which is kind of nice. Here's this uh, cute little uh, this cute little thing that shows you help for Glow. That this is looking at the Platypus v2 docs, the the command help files, and it's just handcrafting some markdown and then passing it to Glow, so I can see all of the examples that we have really quickly. And so you could take you could take an, uh, this sort of thing, and um, if you have your own assets, you could very quickly determine, you know, am I missing something somewhere? Like if I don't have any examples, you can do an count, you know, look for examples count, and it'll tell you, hey, you don't have any examples here. Or if you have a requirement that you have to have at least one example for everything, or maybe you have a requirement for 
three examples for every piece of help that you have. You can actually kind of statistically go get this information in bulk rather than kind of uh, look at the file and look at the thing. Da, 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 da. You don't have to. You don't have to necessarily do that. So that can save you a lot of time. Uh, this is this little utility test markdown help, which I talked about earlier, allows you to determine, as I said, the gross, uh, the gross, uh, come on, let go. What are you doing? Demo. He's stuck. Let's just do that. My goodness. There we go. It's just, oops, wrong. Sorry for the delay. So, This guy is really, he's really test. He just tells you true or false. And he says, hey, this guy is okay. But if you want to see the detail by using the detail parameter, you can actually see what we're doing. We're looking at that file. We're looking for these sorts of things. Yes, we found a thematic block at the first element. That means we have a, we have a metadata. Now we're looking for synopsis. We found it. It's in the right place. And it goes through the, the major elements of the, of the uh, of the tool, or of the of the file, and tells you whether or not you're missing something big. This guy here, what he's going to do, he's going to import this new alias file. I picked that on specifically. Uh, there's a problem in the one of the parameter YAMLs that's illegal YAML. Uh, and we're going to show you the diagnostics, and then we're going to show you the diagnostic messages. Let's just do that one at a time. Let's do this. Okay, so now we have our diagnostic messages. These, these, these are these are the diagnostics. Again, this is a custom format that tells you what's going on. It says, hey, do we have errors? No, we didn't really have any errors. And here's the messages that we get. You can see that we have a couple of warnings. This is a version one schema, so the alias header was not found, but it's not an error, it's just a warning. And then this is a warning as well, and let's, we can actually take a look at that a little bit more closely by doing this. Let's do this and clear. So this is one of this is an example of one of the diagnostic messages that we get. Uh, there's a message that says, "Hey, this YAML might be invalid for this parameter." Uh, and if we look at the uh, at we, it has a line uh, in the markdown where we need to look. And if you look at this, this is the YAML that tried to get uh, uh, deserialized by YAML.net, and it threw, and it is not. This is not valid YAML. Can anybody spot the problem? The problem is in the default value. The problem is uh, that needs to be quoted to be valid YAML because of the double colons. So if you quote it, it turns it into a, it turns it explicitly into a string, and it in it and it will serialize just fine. Now, one of the reasons we caught this is that I have I go through and try to serialize and deserialize the YAML. <clears throat> if it fails, I actually just turn it into a dictionary and then read it one part piece at a time. So this is kind of my, that's why it says last chance. Uh, uh, it's the kind of the last ditch effort to try to parse this, parse this YAML block that we got. And here's a fun one. This guy,
<laughs> unknown, unknown, unknown. What the heck is going on? So we can actually kind of ask it, hey, what's going on? We can with this 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 measure guy, he has a he has a, a way of of he also has this diagnostic stuff that we talked about. Info diagnostic messages. He said, metadata is null. I can't determine because it's missing synopsis examples. It's missing all of this stuff. I can't even determine the schema. And now we can actually kind of find out why. And the reason why is because this is really bad YAML. Uh, I actually captured that as part of this object. And there you go. That's the contents of the file. So I can't do much with that. And then lastly, here's this command help that this compare command help. So I'm going to just compare it to itself so you see what it uh, what it uh, what the output looks like, what the report looks like. <laughs> Lol. And it's a report that basically goes through the entire object in details and shows you every every element of the command help object that is pertinent and tells you whether or not they're the same and what they are and you can actually inspect very closely uh, and uh, uh, if it's the same that's what the s at the first column means if it's an m it's just a message from the it's operational message that says here this is what i'm doing and if it's different it will be a d but there are because i'm comparing the same thing to the same thing it uh, uh, it says, yeah, it's all the same. And if you look down at the bottom, there's another message that says, hey, I'm excluding the comparison of command diagnostics because that's really not pertinent. Um, uh, it does that automatically. And then the compare and re comparison result is okay. And that is almost all of it. And I'm almost out of time. Let's see if I can stop sharing. We'll go back to the deck and then I really will be done. Uh, I'd love to be able to show you. Uh, I don't share. Well, let's do that. I'll go on to the next steps. Oh. Gracious me. Demos. Next steps. So we're about to do a preview release. Should be next week. And for feedback loop, we definitely want to hear, get your feedback. Uh, uh, if you take a chance on this, there it's still, it's going to be a preview release. Compare hand constructed object. Yes, you can compare. Let me go. Anyway, that's the preview release. And now I guess, uh, and the, there's the feedback. And thank you for your time. Now I guess it's time for questions. I think that's what we have. Uh, let me, hey, Jim. Yes? If I'm not mistaken, I believe this may be your last official presentation for Microsoft. I, I, it is. I am going to, re I am retiring in, uh, at the end of the month. I have been working at Microsoft for 25 years and, I've had a job since 1973, so that's enough. Well, my friend, I just want to say thank you for all of the work that you've done here, especially for the work over the last 20 years. So thank you. Can you con compare a hand-constructed object to what Platypus detects on file? Absolutely. Yeah, it's just the, the object itself. It, compare, it's, it, it just is a comparison. Uh, let's see, looking forward to other things. Ex if you export a module to a markdown, can you get it to fetch description from the PSD1 file instead of the placeholders? I would uh, argue that that is, so, yeah, go ahead. Um, so I, I was just testing this out, and in the module file that gets produced, pulls the description from what's in the manifest um, and puts that in the markdown that it creates. It can do that for the module file. Um, there's nothing like that to fill in 
all the placeholders for the different areas in the commandlets. Uh, remember that it, here's here's uh, the, here's this alternative approach that I was talking about earlier in at the very beginning of the because you're dealing with an object because you're dealing with an object model. What you can do is you could do instead of new markdown command help, you just simply say new command help. That will return you the objects. You can update every property that you can reach. Uh, that you that's on that command help object you can update them all and if you want to put a description you could you could do that very easily and then once you're satisfied with the shape of the object with the content of the object you can then export it so you don't in in the scenario you're talking about again it would be a compositional approach where you create the object you fill in the bits that you want and then you export it then you preserve it to disk so that that's that's would be my suggested approach rather than rather than adding a, a this parameter for description and the parameter for para, you know uh uh what you know whatever whatever or, or uh, synopsis or all of that what you really want to do is you want to grab the object treat it like a powershell object update it and then export it and then save it and that's really the approach you'd want to use rather than adding 75 parameters to new command help. What you really want to do is work on the object because you've got higher fidelity anyway. You've got more control. You've got, you, you know, you can do it when you want to. You could do it later. You could do it whatever, whenever you want. So that's how I would suggest that you uh, go ahead and do, uh, take, uh, achieve that uh, behavior. Uh, I'm looking through the... Looking through this, yeah, I, I've been using Glow quite a bit, and all of this Markdown stuff. It's pretty good. Uh, it gets, it needs to get better, but it's pretty good. Uh, you could even kind of, if uh, it's a library, so that's useful. Uh, I think that you know, a future of help would be, hey, why are we supplying this XML thing that's just really low fidelity, and and not great? Why don't we just supply Markdown? and a nice way to view it and and be happy one of the things with this approach is since it's object oriented you could kind of uh, if you wanted to create um, a format xml to render the command help objects in the same or similar format that get help produces so basically replace get help yep once you have the once you that's that's kind of the that's that's one of the the, the huge benefits of this this help object approach, this command help object approach is that it becomes very much more flexible moving forward and kind of off you know moving forward in time. It's 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 a, a, a really a great a, a great thing. Aditya came up uh, with the idea, I think maybe Sean you did. I'm not sure it happened before I was there, but I I. I kind of grabbed that idea and ran with it because I think it's fantastic. Yeah, we've been having a lot of talks internally about um, if we replaced the help system, what would it look like? And uh, all of our talks have been around, let's just let's get rid of MAML. We write it in Markdown. Why not just ship the Markdown and figure out a way to render it? Yeah, mammal is mammal is really low fidelity. It's really quite poor from a from a descript describing the actual command. It has a lot of limitations. It has a lot of issues that are really kind of tricky to fix. And Markdown is, you know, that it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty solid for at least 20 years, I think. Who knows what comes next, right? But but for now I think it's a great it's it's a great way to express this. I'm I'm really hoping that somebody hold you know takes on the this 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 writer approach because uh, if you wanted HTML, honestly you could you could just write a little. Uh, it's a small amount of code. It's essentially how do I express each one of these segments of the markdown in whatever whatever presentation you want, and you you implement that class. That's all there is to it. And you can call that writer, and away you go. You're writing HTML, you're writing whatever you want. You know, you could write a 
better XML that's not MAML. Uh, I should say that we are, I did say early on we're using YAML.net for all of the, uh, for the YAML deserialization and materialization. Uh, I, it's not completely deserialized with YAML.net, but it ought to be, it will be, uh, uh, it, it'll be done that way. And the markdown, uh, the markdown that we are, we are parsing markdown with markdig. And so we're we're walking through the, the the AST that Markdig produces to capture all of the elements that are in in uh, in the Markdown that you that you provide. A couple of places we actually just literally capture the lines in the Markdown rather than try to parse it any uh, uh, any more with any more detail. Like for notes, for example, we just for notes is just capture all of the lines of text uh, from to the next. Uh, to the next major section, the next uh, level two uh, block, and that's the notes. So you can put whatever sort of uh, uh, whatever sort of uh, uh, markdown instructions you want in there, and will it just captures the lines rather than tries to parse any further. The other things are parsed, like uh, the related links. Uh, we we actually are looking for very something very specific there. So. So it depends on it depends on the context of whether or not we're going to do a detailed look or view of the uh, of the markdown. I ah uh, 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 the the parser that's kind of two things. Generator wants headings to be one level deeper. Yeah, if you wanted to do it on the generator side, it might be tough to then read it again. You'll need to write your own parser because we're parsing uh, to the schema that we know that's there. But the but you could certainly write produce a writer. And in fact, if you look at the code base, which is in the V2 branch on the Platypus repository, uh, you'll see how that's done as uh, in the code. You want to look for a writer base is the is kind of the thing you uh, you in. Uh, you subclass and then you implement the uh, the methods that are uh, that are required and away you go. I think I've almost run out of time. Uh, thank you very much for uh, paying attention and staying awake. I appreciate it. Thanks, Jim. I am really looking forward to getting this shipped. <laughs> Me too. Oh, someone's barfing on me. No, throwing confetti on me. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you for the confetti. Oh, no. This is horrible. <laughs> Have a good evening, everyone. <laughs>